got 10 minutes. What's up guys, I'm Lopunzo here, here we are to do a quick, and I mean quick, and I mean speedy Gonzalez spoiler breakdown of chapter 250 of Jujutsu Kaisen, and I'm literally going to give myself 10 minutes, so let's not waste any more time, and let's hop right into it. Editing me, ready, 3, 2, 1, go. What's up guys, that guy with a, shoot, darn it, pencil here, fun time, I do have to do, have it on me, and keep it on me at all times, and another fun fact, we're starting 10 minutes, yeah, wait, no, I missed it, I literally missed it. Okay, this chapter, gas, 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 gas. Um, I most likely wouldn't release this before the long-term spoiler discussion. I came up with this idea in the short-term spoiler discussion, or long-term, whatever. We're hopping into it. First things first, Yuta's him. I apologize. I apologize to every single Yuta fan out there, any, every single Yuta fan I've slighted for not having faith, for not believing in him, for underestimating him, everything, everything. However, I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. How many people out there, how many people out there were expecting Charles' CT? Hmm? Hmm? I'll admit, I wasn't even expecting it, but I remembered it. <laughs> I remembered it, and I brought it up in the you spoiler discussion. So that's number one. But there are big things that happen in this chapter. Very, very big things. Let's see, let's see, let's see. First things first, the major thing that happens is that uh, Sukuna... Sukuna's not looking all too hot in the sense that bro is definitely struggling and buckling under the weight, the massive size, the girt. Let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. Let me not say all that. But essentially... Sukuna is actually in a genuinely bad position, seemingly genuinely genuinely, in the sense that Sukuna himself, in his head, this is a big thing, in his head, believes he cannot actually get rid of these two, these two nuisances, these two maggots, these two creatures, Yuji and Yuda, without grabbing onto them and using Cleave. This dismantle that he throws out through Jacob's ladder does not work doesn't do anything well i mean it does massive damage obviously but he cannot execute them through that why why can he not execute him through that because of everything that happened with gojo and the fact that everyone just got bulkier this was already hinted at back in 247 i do believe that everyone just got massively bulkier than before everyone's leveled up their defensive capabilities but yuji and yudo in particular are noted to be exceptions that sukuna genuinely asked them okay it's been like a month. What did you idiots do? And there's a mention of Yuji saying it's just hard work and a mention of Yuta cheating. Whichever is true is true. Another major thing. Yuta Kotsu shows off th five, six, six techniques. Number one, the big major confirmation. Remember, in the previous chapter, 249, it was just Sukuna theorizing that the sure hit of the domain was Jacob's Ladder. This chapter, hard confirms, hard slaps on the table for everybody to see. Yes, Yuta's technique is Jacob's Ladder. The technique of the sure hit that he's using for his domain. Meeting Yuta's domain is a twofold domain. One, where it is a sure hit, and two, where he can stack his own techniques that are imbued in the katanas. Number two, his katanas are, in fact, limited. In the sense, well, no, the katanas are unlimited, but they're limited in the sense that Yuta does not know what technique a katana has, while there are infinite amounts of them, and he needs to learn which CT it has by picking it up. Meaning he kind of has the random number generator that Hakari does, where he can pick up a CT, and it can be useless, or not necessarily useless, every CT he has is likely useful, but in the certain situation he needs it for it can end up being kind of useless. But we see him use six techniques. Number one is the overall technique, which would be Jacob's Ladder for the entire domain. Number two, this man, he even whips up Drew Shikigami technique, which is crazy to me. <laughs> Once again, I assume it's one of the more useless techniques because Sukuna just swaps them away, but we do see the mini Rikas come out. They pop out. We also get to see you to whip out Sky Manipulation. Bro, <laughs> bro saw one good technique. and was like, hold on, I need to add this to my inventory. And he's never unequipped it, bro. <laughs> Bro really found one good charm and said, you know what, we're not removing this one. This is my ultimate spell and I'm using it every opportunity, so he uses sky manipulation a whole bunch. We also see Bro whip out not just anything, but we see him whip out the crazy thing I was not expecting him to whip out. No, I ain't talking about Cleave, which happens later. I'm talking about Bro whips out. Where is it? Where is it? He whips out Curse Speech. Curse Speech. And I think this does, I, only see, I don't see this in this translation, but I do see it in some other translations. Sukuna only has about the same amount of cursed energy as Yuta, which is why cursed speech works on him with no drawbacks. Even without Sukuna defending his ears, so he, so he, he should realistically, if Sukuna was at full, full strength and full reserves, this should bounce back and harm Yuta, but it does not, meaning these two are around the same level of cursed energy, meaning that so while Sukuna can guard his ears from it now, it would be effective if he's not guarding his ears. Sukuna also gets knocked around by thin icebreakers, which shows that Yuta's still using that. He also whips out Charles' CT, which I mentioned earlier, which is fantastic. And the final technique he whips out is cleave. So, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. This doesn't seem to be the end of Yuta's techniques. Sukuna himself, I've seen in some translations, even theorizes whether or not 
Yuta can use some applications of the Limitless, like Blue, like Red. Well, now he doesn't say that. I think he specifically looks out for Infinity. But of course, the whole idea of, well, you need the six eyes to use Infinity makes Yugana doubt that's possible. But obviously, Yuta unlocking Cleave, or in using it on Tsukuna, crazy. I'm happy I called Charles Technique. I'm happy I called Cleave. I'm just waiting for some more crazy stuff. Let him keep dropping. Let me see him cook. Uh, speaking of cooking, Yuji Itadori is in fact cooking. Every single one of these little mink minks is confirmed. You see these little mink minks right here? They are confirmed with a capital C, unfirmed. They are confirmed to knock Sukuna's soul loose. And because of that, there isn't just the fact that his soul is getting loose, but even his cursed energy control is starting to fade and the control over Megami's body is starting to fade. Whether this means that Megami himself is actually waking up is unknown. I will fully admit that. We don't actually know if this suddenly means that Megami's gonna rise up from the depths of Sukuna and or if he's just having like a physical mental disconnect where he can no longer control the body and he may just straight up pass out. We have no idea. Another thing that is hard to confirm in this chapter, we do get a scrumbly umptious, a juicy ideology, a fun fact that these two kind of just have like relative, I mean, maybe not relative durability, maybe Sukuna puts more force into some of the dismantles than others, but... Both Yuji and Yuta's RCT is just fine. Like, to the point where they are... They're damaged. They're damaged. But once again, Yuji's arms aren't really damaged. And they just casually heal it off. Which, at least to me, implies they have similar RCT speeds. Which is good. I do like that these two are very relative. At least in terms of RCT speed. Another thing, Rika is still unmanifested. There's nothing mentioned in any of the translations about this. But despite Yuta having the ring on. Despite him wielding Rika in the domain. Rika is still unmanifested. We do not have fully manifested Rika. That's just a weird detail that I've noticed. And I don't know why. Maybe it has something to do with exceeding the time limit. Maybe it has to do with something else. But I'm hoping this means that Yuta has more extensive access to his curse technique. And he won't run out after five minutes another thing of interest in this chapter in particular is the fact that Sukuna is still seemingly a decent bit out from his domain as he analyzes himself and notices that his domain is still down and his rct is dull quote unquote due to the battle with gojo notably unfortunately kashimo nor higuruma actually get a mention which does the only contribution of Kashimo that really matters is forcing Sukuna to incarnate earlier than he may have against the rest of the cast and crew, and also Higuruma cutting off his hand. But notably, that hand seems to be fully fine. We don't even see any steam coming off of it this chapter. So, the main thing Higuruma did was take away Kamutoke, which is still a major removal, but overall, it makes their character impact less impactful, but it gives Gojo a relatively, not relatively, a very important character more impact. Sukuna very specifically notes him as the reason why everything's going wrong with him, and why he can't domain, why his RCT is dull. And notably, we do get a statement here that does kind of soft confirm that both Yuji and Yuda together believe, well, Yuda himself says, if Gojo had no lasting after effects, it would have instantly been slaughtered by Sukuna. That's just how it is. If that were not the case, if Gojo just went out sorry and did absolutely nothing to Sukuna and left him perfectly fine, then they would not be able to cook in the situation as they're cooking right now. That's good. That's great. And it does kind of confirm two things. Number one, it confirms that no one really scales a full power hay and body Sukuna because we haven't seen a full power hay and body Sukuna because his CT output is low, his cursed energy reserves are lower, and his RCT is trash, and he has no domain. So no one really scales with that Sukuna. But this does also seem to confirm by Sukuna's own statements about not being able to slaughter them without grabbing them and the ability of the characters to tank and attack and damage him. It does appear that Sukuna may be actually approaching his current limitations in the sense that he cannot do anything. So it implies that without the ability to amp his dismantles, the dismantle net that he throws out here, which is a smaller variation of what he threw out towards Kashimo, without the ability to amplify those because the second mouth and the lower set of arms are consistently being taken up by Hollow Worker Basket, it is very, and I mean very likely, that Sukuna can't really pull out more. He's going to have to whip out another technique, he's going to have to do something else. It may imply that Sukuna's not holding back. I'm still somewhat hesitant to believe that, but there are some things in this chapter which want to make me believe that. Because, notably, Sukuna is shown consistently to be dodging and interacting with Yuji directly when he knows that's a bad idea. And he doesn't like Yuji, so there's no reason for him to consistently interact with them, but Yuji's still able to tag him. Of course, Sukuna is still able to flip the grip and flip the switch on at any moment's notice, but it is very interesting that... He's saying all these things about how he can't just one-tap them with regular dismantles, and 
how the others note that, oh, yeah, Bro can't execute us right now, but if he was at full power, he could. Which implies that he's going towards the limits of his current capabilities. But overall, insanely W chapter. This is the epitome of Jujutsu Kaisen, where you get both of our main characters doing their doing thorn thing. And I do love that. Can't wait to see next chapter when they summon to start to cook more. Hopefully we don't end up with a flashback to the airport. Hopefully we don't cut away. I'm shocked we didn't cut away this chapter. I'm very interested to see how Akari versus Uruume wraps up then. It may be an off-screen fight, which I don't want because we just got Uruumi's domain drop at the end of their little scuffle at the start of that chapter, I believe 246, but I hope we get more. I have three seconds. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah, all right, we're done. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that little notification bell so you do not miss out on any of those that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have to have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as one kind of one dollar month. Things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. And also, now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reaction to this very chapter and ad-free variations of all my videos. Now, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Once again, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Daggle the Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to Art3 our members, Recliner Plays, Red Wolf 4765, Greyhound, and Atkins Void. I'd like to give another big thank you to our final patrons, Victor, Sean, RNG Master, Midnight Gemlord, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneal, and Demix LND. Give another scrumptious thank you to our $7 members, Autumn Mornings Lazo, and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give another hefty thank you to our $10 patrons, Robbie Uchiha, Joaquin, Idemokami, and China Doll 9 And I'd like to give another gargantuan thank you to our $25 member, Alex Ice Rose. And I'd like to give a thank you, an amazing thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder. And another thank you to our next $25 patron, Ehack1. And a final Final thank you to our final $25 patron, Steeron.